uh, we are wrapping up uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, and we're excited to have the Executive Director for the Catawba Community Mental Health Center joining us this morning, Tamara Edrington. And good morning to you, Tamara. Good morning. Thank you all for having me. Welcome. I love when we were just uh, talking before the microphones turned on that you wanted just to end the month with just one last reminder and push. Uh, while it is Mental Health Awareness Month right now during the month of May, this is something that goes on year round. It's Absolutely. just nice to have a spotlight and a time to really raise awareness. Absolutely. And I appreciate you guys for having me here and bringing awareness to this very important topic. Well, let's start with the Catawba Community Mental Health Center. What do you want our listeners and our viewers to know about this center? Well, I want you all to know that we are here covering the Tri-County area, Chester, Lancaster, and York County, and we provide psychiatric and behavioral health services to to the population of the Tri-County area. We are an agency under the South Carolina Department of Mental Health. I'm one of the 16 outpatient centers that the state provides. Um, We, of course, cover the three counties here and the other 15 sister centers. Um, They cover services throughout the other 43 counties in South Carolina. Wow. And so you'll see everyone from womb to tomb. (laughs) Womb to tomb. Yes, we will. We do not have an age restriction. And what are some of the... Um, I don't I don't necessarily want to call it problems, but why do people need to come see you where you are? And and I know that that runs a big gamut. It does. It does. Um, we serve everyone. Um, and again, we separate our, our um, help based on age and population. So we certainly provide emotional help to children that are emotionally disturbed who may have ADHD or anxiety or adjustment disorders due to areas in life. Um, We all adjust through areas. And our other, with our adults 18 and up, we provide services to the severely and persistently mentally ill, the SPMI population, those that have bipolar, bipolar with psychosis, schizophrenia, some of those um, heavier terms that you hear about in the community. Are they housed with you if those folks need if they cannot return home, do they stay with you all, or what does that look like? No, we are an outpatient provider, so we will provide outpatient on a weekly basis if it's intense a couple of times a week. But if they're at the juncture that they need more help than we can provide, we can often refer to an inpatient facility, um, whether it's one of our five state hospitals or whether it's a private hospital, because we do contract with private hospitals as well. Do you feel like mental health has made strides within the society as not being so taboo anymore that people are are more um, willing to step up and say, hey, I, I'm struggling here or I have a child who's struggling in, in this. What can you do to help me? Because I feel like sometimes people just don't want to accept the help because they don't want to admit that there is a problem. Do you see that that months like this where we are raising awareness is is helping with the overall mental health of society? I do see there's not as much of a stigma as there used to be maybe five or ten years ago. And as much as we want to move past COVID, I do want to give COVID the um, proper they, – they were – it was a big thing what mm-hmm. brought out because we were housed. We lost a lot of people. So mental health, mental health and mental illnesses – rose to the occasion so i think that shed a lot of light on people saying i need help i needed help then and it's okay now there's still a slight stigma but i do feel like mental health awareness months and activities and programs are they are eliminating that stigma well no no offense really to hollywood but hollywood has painted the image of someone who's mentally ill as wearing a straight jacket in a padded Mm -hmm. room and Mm -hmm. that's probably extreme extreme cases that what, what, to your point, you, you, you're you dealing with folks that have got serious things going on in their lives. But again, Hollywood paints that picture. So we assume that's what everyone is going through. Mm-hmm. We've seen just what the last week or two, um, the title holders for Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, they have stepped down citing mental health reasons. I read mm-hmm. somebody just the other day, um, a football quarterback it took like three months off. And when he came back, it was because of mental health. Mm-hmm issues to ashley's point while we've made strides do people also though sometimes use that as a as a crutch or to say i'm suffering from mental health ashley and i are both anxious people Mm -hmm. does that fall underneath the umbrella of mental health and are we accurate by saying we've got a mental health issue Yes, um, we we give diagnosis based on a diagnostic statistical manual, and anxiety definitely falls under there. There's subcategories of anxiety. Some of them are very specific, um, as far as um, agoraphobia, a fear of going outside. That that 
anxious, you have generalized anxiety, you're just anxious and you don't know why you're anxious. Some kids have test anxiety. That certainly is, um, but it may not warrant long-term care. It may not warrant therapy at all. It may warrant just some mild medication to help deal with it in the moment. Some people that are generally anxious don't need medication all the time. It's just when I'm ready to take that test, I can feel my heart rate picking up or in public speaking events. Um, So yes, it definitely falls under that category, but it's not as extreme as some of the other mental illnesses may be. And some mental illness is just coping mechanisms and things that you can Mm -hmm. maybe Mm -hmm. get rid of. Mm -hmm. Some are what is going to stick with you for forever. Yes. Correct? Absolutely. Um, They're all treatable, not necessarily curable. Okay. Um, So we have to realize that. We're speaking with Tamara Edrington. She's the executive director for Catawba Community Mental Health Center. Tamara, what's your biggest challenge or obstacle for for you all? What what's something that I think for us as an agency, it's not the people that we serve because they are great and that's what we want to do. It's the funding mechanism that we have, the biggest challenge. The the lack of funding, the lack of resources limits what we can do and how much of it that we can provide. We want to serve everybody to the same capacity all the time. But without the resources of the or the funding, it's impossible to um, expand programming. Well, your hands are tied a little bit here, Absolutely. right? Because your funding comes from, if you're under the umbrella of the State Department of Mental Health here in South Carolina, it's tied to their funding. Not necessarily. Oh, not. Okay. I think a lot of people, that's a misconception oh. that we were are 100% funded by the state. We are not. We're about 40% funded mm. oh, okay. by the state. We rely on our counties that we serve to give us funding for that. And we also rely heavily on any grants that we may write. And we are we build resources. I mean, insurances such as Medicaid, Medicare, private insurances. Um, my staff have to generate the revenue that they that we bring in through billing. So we're only 40% funded by this. Okay. Well, I'm glad wow. you mentioned That's that. Awesome. I thought it was That's almost no 100. Great so do you, do you have to go to the counties, the individual, Absolutely. the county councils and Absolutely. just say here are the I services? I spend my time pounding the pavement with the counties, <laughs> um, county council meetings, um, writing letters quite often. And that yes. probably gets, and mm. that probably gets a little mm. dicey too, because if you're serving York, Chester and Lancaster County, mm. I would think that they all three have a different budget for for that so mm-hmm. yeah that that's a lot to manage mm-hmm. i mean the, and that's a side of it too that people just don't right. don't think about mm-hmm. who, especially when you need that help Tamara, tell our audience members where you're located or how do folks get in touch with you if they realize something's not right Absolutely. We have four locations within the three counties. We have two locations in New York County. Our child services are at 448 Lakeshore Parkway. Our adult services are at 205 Piedmont Boulevard across the street um, from the Piedmont Medical Center. Um, We're also located in Chester County as well. Um, That address, unfortunately, is, is slipping me right now, but in Chester County and then also in Lancaster County as well. All right. Well, you can reach out to them here and they'll connect you if you live in those uh, areas. Well, Tamara, we appreciate, as always, the conversation and helping to educate all of us when it comes to mental health awareness.